This is Sarah Junick with Drilling Contractor. Today I'm at the 2019 IEDC World Drilling Conference in Milan. I'm with Trey Adams. He's the Vice President of Operations for Helmer Campaign Technologies. Trey, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So how does automated sliding work and what results have you seen in the Permian Basin? Oh, that's a great question. Really for us, automated sliding is, is two big buckets. One is a good GPS device, which we, which we have in the MotiveBit guidance system. Our guidance system is, is truly economically focused and based. You know, it makes decisions based on well worked tortuosity, ROP, and then staying in the right geological window based on PV10. In addition to that GPS device, we have to be able to execute and autonomously execute the slide. So that's where the auto slide piece comes in and the top drive control and being able to control tool face while simultaneously optimize the drilling parameters to execute a slide as well or better than a human being. And what we've seen in the Permian Basin to this point is we've seen very encouraging results. In the case study we presented today, we actually had a reduction in slide percentage by time and a slide percentage by footage. And that was largely due to um, the algorithm following the GPS's direction. So we're executing on what a GPS device is saying without a human being in the loop and, and negating a lot of the human bias associated with it. How does automated directional drilling impact the humans involved? So that's a, that's a fantastic question. You know, um, right now what we're able to do with automated directional drilling is really move our strategic assets, some of our top tier talent, from the field into remote operation centers. These are the guys that are monitoring the wells that are going on right now. They're making sure the algorithms are tuned appropriately, and they're managing the communication protocol between the ROC or the real-time centers in the rig. So these individuals are, are folks that used to work at the rig. These men and women used to work at the rig 260 plus days a year. Now they're working in remote ops centers and, uh, and able to be able to see their families in the evening. They're able to have a different quality of life now, um, coach their son's baseball team if they'd like to, where they, at, at, at different times the commute back and forth would not enable them to have that type of life quality. What are the key considerations when automating directional drilling related to change management? Yeah, change management really is the most complex piece to this. You know, we can write all the algorithms we want, and uh, we really have to be able to show the why to the guys at the rig and, and men and women in our operating environments. So starting at the top of the value chain and top, starting at the top where you have to meet with asset managers and vice presidents and have the right partnerships and messages and approaches at that level, then you have to hit the rig site and really understand what the men and women around the rotary table are feeling whenever you implement al algorithms and automation solutions at the rig because there's going to be losses, inherent losses associated with it. A lot of the people at the rig, men and women at the rig, um, truly feel their intrinsic value is provided by the directional knowledge that they have. And if we're in there eliminating the need for a lot of that directional knowledge, we have to pr provide a resource or provide a path to them that ensures that they remain strategic and valued in their organization and with ours. So we're, we're doing this a myriad of ways, but it is truly the most challenging part of the equation, and we're continuing to evolve our approaches as we move forward. Thanks again, Trey, for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for watching drillingcontractor.org.